So, Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. I'm not sure. It seems like that may still be the heat. Go out from the water. Sorry, just responding back to uh, somebody. So, Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tamassaka bi sunnatihi ila yawmiddin amma ba'd fa inna astaqal hadithi kalamullah wa khairul hadi hadiyu Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharra al-umuri muhdathatuha wa kulla muhdathatin bid'atin wa kulla bid'atin dolala wa kulla dolalatin finnar I commence in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah Jalla wa ala the Qur'an and the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. InshaAllah ta'ala, today we are going to be talking about the story of Lut insha'Allah ta'ala or Lot as is recognized by the people of the scripture. It is an important story because of the fact of where we are living in or in these current days and times and the time the well the times that we are living in. It is important because of the times that we are living in and Subhan Rabbil Azim, it has become something that has become prevalent during our times, the way it was prevalent during the times of Lut alayhi salam. Prophet Lut was the nephew of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them both. It says that Lut, he went to the city of Sodom after Ibrahim had asked him to do so. It was the main city of that region with suburbs and satellite villages. Its people were the most immoral and insolent of nature. They were the first people in humanity to practice homosexuality, meaning a man sleeping with a man or a woman with a woman. La called them to heed Allah's command and to worship him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that he forbade them from this unnatural practice and abhorring act. But they ignored and they rejected Lot's appeal. And continued in their erroneous indecency. As a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them. So when we go and we begin to look at the story of Lut. It says that Lut, just like every other prophet and every other messenger that we have taken up until this point. He began by calling the people to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That is the foundation and we can't mention that enough. And with that foundation, in addition to it, he called them to cease, stop, to cease and to stop practicing those illicit, immoral acts that they were committing. But like always, when it came to the disbelieving people, they rejected the plea and the call of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. And no one would believe in his teachings and there was no one who followed him. And they said that they seemed to be intent even to expel Lut from among them. Right? We mentioned that this is common. You call them, they don't believe, then they become physical or they become threatening. They begin to threaten you and... One of the issues here again was they were threatening to expel Lut. As Allah wa informs us in 2756 that they said, Expel the family of Lut from your town. They are people clean and pure. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Expel the family of Lut from your town because they are people who are clean and pure. SubhanAllah. So seeking purity and decency became, as uh, Ibn Kathir says, the reason to expel them from the town by these individuals who didn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see how backwards life becomes. They say 
expel Lutz because he's clean and his family is clean and pure. They didn't say expel Lutz because he's immoral. Expel him because he's indecent. They're saying he is clean, he's pure, he's moral. Mashallah, he has good etiquette. He has, he's following the creator of the heavens and earth. He, mashallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, is holding on to what human beings are supposed to do. So because of that, expel him and get rid of him. They flip everything upside down, right? For them, good is no good. Bad is good, right? Subhanallah. It's amazing the way they change things around. And in today's day and time, we are facing exactly the same. That anyone who has any type of morality, anyone who stands up for faith, anyone who believes in the scripture, believes in God and says that this is what God has revealed and they don't want to change it. They don't want to, you know, uh, uh, dirty it by changing the scripture. They don't want to affect it by creating or putting or inserting something in it that's not from it. These people are out of their mind. And everyone else who's practice, practicing immorality, they are sane. They are the ones who are supposed to be leading the way. Subhana Rabbil Azim. This is the same act and the same behavior that the people of Lut had. Right? You guys are backwards because you want to do what's right. And we are, mashallah, progressive. Because... We are understanding that we want to be in our feelings, we want to be in our emotions, we want to be in our desires, and we should have the ability to do so. And you, with your morality, get out of here. Allahu Akbar. Subhanahu Rabbil Azim. So they flip purity and decency with impurity and indecency, and they want to follow the latter, and the ones who are following the former are insane. <clears throat> and they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibn Kathir, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected and purified Lut and his family except his wife. They were evacuated from that wicked town honorably. And Allah turned their town into a putrefied sea with bitter salty water. He says, apart from this act of indecency, they used to cut off the highway. They would rob the travelers. They would cheat their friends. They would commit all sorts of bad acts in public places of assembly and meetings. So not only were these individuals practicing the immorality of homosexuality, but they were also on top of that, robbing travelers, cheating their friends, committing all sorts of immoral acts in the society as well by negatively impacting the society and anyone who came past or through their city, subhanAllah. So when Lot, he came, when Lut, he came and he threatened them with, of the consequences of their evil deeds, they even dared to inflict their chast a chastisement upon him. They said, bring us the chast uh, upon themselves, bring us the chastisement of Allah if you are truthful, just like every other disbelieving people before him. Bring us the chastisement of Allah, the punishment of Allah, if you are truthful, Yalut. They thought themselves to be invincible, right? No different than the people of today. You are backwards because you don't agree with my style of life. You are backwards because you are practicing the religion from Allah. You are backwards because you are following the revelation of God, right? SubhanAllah. And if do what you wish, Ask God to bring down the punishment upon us. We don't care. We don't believe in it. No different than the disbelievers of today. Subhanallah. And Lut, subhanallah, when Lut saw the ever increasing insolent attitude, he made a prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And asked Allah for his help against these people. Allah jalla wa ala, he sent down angels to punish them. And these angels that were coming down to punish them, they passed by Ibrahim. And they gave Ibrahim glad tidings of a knowledgeable child and informed him of the punishment that they were going to inflict upon the people of Lut. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, subhanallah. He said, for what matters have you been sent? They said, we have been sent 
to a sinning people. So we can send down upon them stones of clay marked by your Lord for the, for the wanton. And he also said, and when our messengers came to Ibrahim with the glad tidings, they said, we are to destroy the people of this town. Surely they are evildoers. He said, but Lut is there. Right? He was concerned with Lut, but Lut is there. They said, we are well aware of who is there, the angel said to Ibrahim. We shall save him and his family except his wife. She shall be of those who stay behind and are punished. So when the fear passed from the mind of Ibrahim and the glad tidings came to him, he began to plead with us for the people of Lut. Subhanallah. Ibrahim began to plead for the people of Lut. Ibn Khathiri says, because Ibrahim expected that the people of Lut will one day repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they would accept the call of Lut to believe in Allah and worship him and will cease from their indecent acts. This is why Allah described Ibrahim as surely Ibrahim was forbearing, compassionate, penitent. O oh, Ibrahim, relinquish this. The decree of your Lord has gone forth, the angels had told him. And surely there's coming a chastisement upon them which cannot be turned back. Right? Relinquish this idea, Ibrahim, because these individuals are going to be punished for that which they commit. And no one is going to be able to stop that punishment, yeah, Ibrahim. But subhanahu rabbil azim, Ibrahim, he was full of compassion and hope that one day these people would turn and do the right thing. And repent to Allah and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when we read this verse as well, beloved brothers and sisters, we have to be cautious, right? We have to be cautious. This hopefulness of Ibrahim was not acceptance of their behavior. This hopefulness and this compassion of Ibrahim was not accepting their immorality, was not compromising his faith for their immorality. Rather, he was hoping that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala would guide them and place within their hearts this mercy, this compassion, and that they would be guided to what was right. But we know that Allah knows what is best. Right? And this point has to be made clear because way too often what people are looking for for the believers is to compromise. As you're going to see in the story, the people are going to tell Lut, yeah, Lut, leave us be. Just let us do what we want. Give us the men that are in your homes. Khalas, don't worry about it. Right? Subhanallah. Compromise. Give up your belief. Give up your stance of faith. Leave alone that which you say you are upon. Right? And the Muslim, subhanahu rabbil azim, is not one that should compromise their faith. The believer is not one to give up the iman, to give up the faith, to give up the Quran, to give up the teachings. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed therein, telling us that these acts of homosexuality, and now you can go ahead and extend them into transgenderism and everything else under those alphabets that they want to take, that all of that is immoral according to religion and according to faith. It is immoral according to religion and according to faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his messengers with that message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels to destroy those people because of that immorality. And there has never come a message from the time of Adam or from the time of Lut that this was practiced to the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say that this was okay. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has placed this in the Quran as a sign as an admonishment that this act is not okay and we should never accept it as being okay. Yes, people have the right to do whatever it is that they wish to do and want to do, subhanAllah. But in our hearts, we hate the action. In our hearts, we hate and we dislike the practice because it is something hated and disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you make dua that Allah guide them? Absolutely. Once they have died upon that, the dua is done for them, right? Subhanallah. Then their hal, their condition, their state is going to be between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point. 
But we must understand, beloved brothers and sisters, that we do not compromise when it comes to these things. Because people want Muslims to take the stance of immorality. And we see how they're taking this immorality now and taking it to another level where they want to begin to even educate children at the early age of three, four, and five in the public school district. Right? SubhanAllah. That they want to take this issue of immorality and they want to begin to push this agenda into the children. So that the children are raised with thinking that this is okay. And the people of faith or the people who are supposed to be people of faith and religion, they are taking the back seat and sitting up in the bleachers and they are remaining silent and quiet. Right? By this storm that has hit us, subhana rabbil azim. And as long as we remain silent, as long as we remain quiet, as long as we take the Qur'an and we hide it behind our backs as if the Qur'an is not the haqq, then the immorality will continue to grow. It will continue to spread like a cancer until it begins to affect even within the Muslim ummah, which it has already began affecting inside of the Muslim ummah already. May Allah wa ta'ala save us and our families from this. Ameen. Ibn Kathir, he went on saying that Allah Jalla wa ala said, and when our angels came to loot, he was grieved and felt unable to protect them, meaning the people, right? The angels, meaning the angels, not the people, meaning the angels who came in the form of people. And he said, this is a distressful day. And he said that when the angels left Ibrahim, as mentioned earlier, those angels were Jibril, Mikail, and Israfil. And that they went on till they approached the city of Sodom. And that they were, they took on the form of young looking men. So Allah may put them to test and establish the proof against the people of why Allah is going to punish them. They were hosted by Lut and it was about the time of sunset. Lut feared that if he did not host them, someone else might play as host to them. And he did not know that they were angels sent to punish his people. So he considered them to be human beings. And it was said that this was a great test. Because he knew that it was a difficult task to protect them at night. As he had already experienced with other guests before them who had came and arrived and visited. His people had already asked him not to host anyone in his home. And in Qatada he says that when the angels came to loot, he was working on land. And that they asked him to host them. And he felt embarrassed to refuse their request. He walked in front of them to his house and tried to give them hints that they should return and leave this town and go to another town. He said to them, by Allah, I had never come to know such wicked people on the face of the earth as the people of this town. I've never come to know such wicked people on the face of the earth as the people of this town who are practicing this act of homosexuality. And he repeated this to them four times, subhanAllah. Lut then brought them to his house and nobody appeared to know them except his family. But his wife went to her people and he, she informed them, right? So his wife, as the angels were brought into the house of Lut, she escapes out of the home and she goes to the immoral people and she informs them that Lut has guests, men, subhanAllah. And she says, and they, and they said, she said, there in the house of Lut are men and I have never seen such beautiful faces like theirs. What? She was enticing the men to go to Lut's house, to take these men from Lut's house so that they can do those immoral acts with them. And his people came rushing towards him, subhanAllah. And they were accustomed to do shameful deeds. And he said, oh, my people, here are my daughters. They are purer for you if you, are, if you marry them. And he says that this verse means that they, did, they, they, did, they, they, that they did this indecent act in addition to other criminal deeds, right? And subhanAllah, the scholars say that when he said, here are my daughters, that basically he was telling them really about the women in the community, 
women that they can marry, women who maybe they they they, they were married to or whatever have you already, saying these are my daughters. Why? Because Allah has said the prophets is worthier to the believers than their own selves and his wives are their mothers, right? So this is kind of an explanation, him using that word, daughters, inshallah ta'ala. But subhana rabbil azim, we see that even in the house of Lut, Allahu Akbar, his wife, being from among the wicked. She was in the house of prophethood, subhanallah, right? Being from among the wicked. She went out to entice the men, the men coming, rushing to the house of Lut, saying that there are men inside wanting to take these men, subhanallah. Showing us again, over and over again, Nuh with his son, Ibrahim with his father, Ibrahim with his community, right? Subhanallah. Hud and Salih, right? Subhanallah. Shu'ib as we're going to learn, right? These individuals first hurt, right? By their own family members and those closest to them, subhanallah. So Allah says that in 1178, so fear Allah and do not disgrace me about my guest, regarding my guest. And this was the statement of Lut. He says, is there not a single right-minded man among you? Is there not a single right-minded man among you? He was pleading with them not to insult him in front of his guests. It is also an evidence, Ibn Kathir says, that there was no single right-minded person among them. Allahu Akbar. Right? And this shows us that Lut by himself, with his family, except his wife, that they were standing upon the truth. And that you need to stand upon the truth even if you are standing upon the truth by yourself. And this is important, wallahi. Because sometimes the pressure is so much that we believe that, oh my God, I'm going to keep silent. I'm not going to say anything. Why? Because there's so many people and it just seems like it's so intense that... I'm afraid to stand upon the truth because maybe I'm the only one upon the truth. And if that is the case, so be it. Walhamdulillah, that is a bushra, that is a glad tidings for you, that you are upon the truth when no one else is upon the truth. Lut was upon the truth when everybody else was in dolala, everybody else was in misguidance, everybody else was astray. And Lut and his family are holding on to the truth even though the pressure in the society is telling him to let it go. And us as Muslims, wallahi tallahi wa billahi, we have to be people who stand upon the truth, who speak the truth, who implement the truth, who live the truth, even if we hold on to that truth by ourselves. Because it's not about numbers ever. It's not about how many people are with me, or how many people are against me. It's upon. It's about me being upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me to be upon. Only fearing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala that if I turn away from the truth, that He will destroy me along with everyone else. Look at the wife of Lut. The father of Ibrahim. The son of Nuh. The son of Adam. Right? Subhanallah. These are family members who turned away from the truth. And they were destroyed because of it. Allahu Akbar. May Allah keep us upon the truth. Right? And he says that subhanAllah, they were so deeply indulged in their lust of desiring after a man, that when their prophets showed them the right way of satisfying their sexual desires, they said to Lut, you know that we have no desire towards your daughters. We know, you know that we don't desire your women, ya Lut. You know what it is that we desire. You know what it is that we want. We want the men. A'udhu billah. Wal iyadhu billah. And Lut said to them, Would that I had the power to set you right. Or if I could find some strong support for refuge. He wished that if he had the power or support, he would have inflicted upon them a severe chastisement for this imprudent behavior that they had. But they insisted and persisted in their demand of, of lusting and having sex with Lut's, with Lut's guests. And they became more daring as time was going on. And he says, this is why Allah said to his prophet, swearing by his life, 
by your life, O prophet, they wander in their wild, they wander blindly in their wild intoxications. Yeah, O prophet, yeah, O messenger, they wander blindly in their wild intoxications. Subhana Rabbil Azim. They don't think or care about anything else except in those things that they have been intoxicated with. Those desires and that fahisha and that immorality. And they want everyone to be like them. Don't be mistaken in that. Their goal is to make you like them. Their goal is to change you from your belief to disbelief. Their goal is to get you to leave faith and become disrespectful and disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their goal is to change you from moral to immoral, from decent to indecent. There is no other goal in their mind, wallahi. Because if there was another goal in their mind, they would respect who you are. They would respect your book. They would respect your faith. They would respect your religion. But this is not the case. So why is it that the Muslims are so scared? To stand up and respect their own selves when no one else respects them. When no one else cares about what they believe and what they feel, but they want to force the Muslim into the feelings and the beliefs of someone else. And if we were to say, you need to believe and you need to feel like we feel, then we are extremists. We're terrorists. We're everything bad under the sun because that road is not a two-way street. That road is a one-way street and it leads away from you. And the minute you try to turn it around and make it a two-way street, you have a battle on your hand and most people are afraid to stand in that battle, unfortunately. And they say that Prophet Lut, at this point, he was pushing them back from trying to enter the house while the door was closed. But they were intent to enter it. Luke was admonishing them from behind the door and when it seemed to be a difficult task to hold them back, that's when he said, would that I had the power to set you right or that I can find some strong support for refuge. The angels then said to Luke in that moment, O oh Luke, we are the messengers of your Lord. Allahu Akbar. By no means shall these people reach you. Right? SubhanAllah. And it is mentioned that Jibreel came out to them and hit their faces with his wings and they were blinded. And then the angels informed Lut about the punishment of his people saying, Morning is the appointed time. Excuse me. For their destruction is not the morning almost nigh. Right? For their destruction... Morning is the appointed time for the destruction is not the morning almost closed, right? SubhanAllah. So when the loot went out from that city with his family who were only his daughters, no person followed him. It is said that his wife was with him. However, when they were out and the sun rose, the punishment of Allah approached them never to be turned away. And it was said that the and it was also said that the wife of Lut stayed behind with her people, right? This is another opinion. And it is also said that she went along with Lut and her daughters. However, when she heard the sound of the blast and the falling of that city from the sky, she turned back towards her people. And so she disobeyed the command of her Lord. And she says, Ah, my people. And then a brimstone fell upon her, and she was smashed into pieces. She was on the religion of her people and she was also a spy for her people regarding who was coming to her home as a guest to be with Lut or to stay with Lut. And Allah wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah has set forth an example for the disbelievers, the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut, who were under two of our righteous slaves, yet they betrayed them. So they avail them nothing before Allah. And it was said, enter you both the fire with those who will enter the fire. Allahu Akbar. So Ibn Kathir says, they betrayed them in their religion and did not follow them. And it does not mean that these women were prostitutes, right? Because Allah wa has never decreed the wife of a prophet 
to go out and prostitute herself, okay? Ibn Abbas, another Islamic scholar, says, no wife of a prophet has ever uh, committed an act of prostitution, okay? But they were upon the way of their people, right? Subhanallah. As the Prophet Sallam tells us, right? فَلْيَنْذُرْ مَنْ يُخَالْ فَالرَّجُلُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ Look at who you befriend because a man is upon the religion or the way of his friend. And her friend and her supporters and those whom she supported were the disbelievers, unfortunately. SubhanAllah. In ending this story, it was stated that the city was on a road which is still being largely used by travelers and wayfarers. As indeed Allah said in, in this verse as well, and indeed you pass by them in the morning and by night. Will you then not understand? Meaning, will you then not reflect and contemplate upon what happened to these evil people? And he also said, and we have left a clear sign of it for people who possess understanding. And also said, when then when we then we evacuated the believers who were therein, but we found not therein any but one Muslim household, and we left therein a sign for those who fear a painful chastisement. Meaning we left that city as an admonition for all who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment, so that they may not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or commit a similar act as committed by the people of Lut, this act of homosexuality. And he says um, that unfortunately, subhanAllah, many in our day and time unfortunately have returned back to the state of heedlessness, right? Many have returned back to this practice where it first came and began the practice of those people who were with Lut, right? And that subhanAllah in today's day and time, we are, they are practicing that same thing. Then the scholars also say as a side point that we shouldn't say that these are the people of Lut. Sometimes they say Qawmul Lut, right? In Arabic, like the people of Lut, right? These were the people in the city where Lut resided, right? Because the people of Lut, if they were the, from the people of Lut, from the believers, they would not have been these immoral people, right? SubhanAllah. So kind of being careful of how we attribute these people to Lut alayhi salatu wassalam. So again, before just moving on, beloved brothers and sisters, we learn in this story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he punished these individuals because of this immoral act of homosexuality on top of all of the other immoral acts that they used to practice. And when we look at things in today's day and time, we cannot be confused. Homosexuality is not okay. Transgenderism is not okay. And the Muslims have to have a firm stand on that. There are narrations from the Prophet Sallallahu and from the A'imma who come after them regarding the types of punishments that these individuals should receive if they lived inside of, a, of, of an Islamic state which doesn't exist, right? SubhanAllah, if they lived in an Islamic state under Islamic law, that they would be punished for this act. Right, subhanAllah, just like a person is punished for adultery, right, and punished for fornication, right, subhanAllah as well. Remember that punishments in Islam are always a preventive measure, right? They're not a barbaric measure. They are a measure for preventing these types of acts to take place. There's punishment for people who do magic so that people don't do magic. There's punishment for people who steal so that people don't steal. There's punishment for people who commit adultery so that they don't commit adultery. There's punishment for homosexuality so that the issue of homosexuality can be stopped. But when the society at large has become part and parcel of all of these immoral acts and these things have become okay in the society then naturally what you're going to see is an indecent society, an immoral society that continues to go further away from Allah and His Messenger. And we can only wait for the punishment of Allah wa ta to come upon such people and may Allah protect us from being punished and being amongst them when such people and individuals are punished. But we have to be clear 
that as Muslims, we don't compromise in our faith. It is not okay by no stretch of the imagination. None of these practices. We see how severe Allah speaks against it. And we see how Allah turned the entire city upside down because of it. And now for us to come and change and say, ah, it's okay. That is extremely problematic. That doesn't come out of the mouth of individuals who have iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether we understand it, whether we don't understand it, we know that what Allah does is never a mistake. Allah's actions are never a mistake. Because if we say that Allah's action is a mistake, then the entire religion is a mistake. The Qur'an is useless to us at that point. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not make mistakes insha'Allah ta'ala. Moving on, the story of Shu'ib, alayhi salatu wa salam insha'Allah. So when we look at the story of Shu'ib, it says that the people of Midian were Arabs. So he was from the people of Midian. The people of Midian were Arabs who lived in a city called Midian which was closer to the Syrian border. Not far from the Dead Sea, Midian was a tribe with which they, become, they became known. They were the sons of Midian, Ibn Median, Ibn Ibrahim. Some of the early Muslims called Shu'ib the eloquent preacher among the prophets. Okay, and this is because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he narrated, excuse me, that whenever the Prophet ﷺ mentioned Shu'ib, he would say, That he was the khatib of the anbiya. He was the eloquent preacher of the prophets, subhanAllah. And the people of Midian, they were disbelievers who, were cut, who, who, who cut off the highway or cut off the way for robbers, right? They would cut off the highway. They would rob people. They would frighten the travelers. And they used to worship al-aika, uh, which was a thicket tree, right? SubhanAllah. They were people of evil behavior and they cheated in their measurements and weights. Okay, so also we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that we are not to cheat when doing business in measurements and weights, right? Meaning when you're measuring stuff and selling stuff, right? We're talking about how Allah, how they used to do things back in the day. They would measure stuff and sell it, right? That you can't cheat in that, nor can you mix good product with bad product, right? That they used to do all of these things. They would mix good product with bad product. They would cheat in their measurements and weights, right? There were people who were always... Right, robbing the people, subhana rabbil adim. And that when they sold things, they would sell them with deficiencies. So Allah sent to them from among them a man as their prophet, and his name was Shu'ib. He called them towards the worship of Allah alone, again, without associating any partners for them uh, to, to him. He forbade them from their evil and erroneous practices of cheating people in their measurements and weights and that they should not frighten or rob people of their merchandise on the highways. As a result, as always, of preaching and calling people to the right path, some people followed Shu'aib and they became believers, but the majority rejected him and remained in a state of disbelief. Allah has said about him and his people in the Quran, and to Midian, Allah sent their brother Shu'aib. And he said, Oh, my people worship Allah, you have no other God other, th other than him. There has now come to you a clear sign from their Lord. It was stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave Shu'aib some miracles, but we have no details regarding the miracles and the signs that Shu'aib brought, unfortunately. right? So we know that he was given some, but what were they? How were they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows best. And Allah says, therefore give full measure and weight, and do not withhold from people their things, neither cause corruption in the earth after it has been set right. Okay? Neither cause corruption on the earth after it has been sent right. <clears throat> Sorry. Asuddi, he says regarding this, that they used to collect 10% from the merchandise and the wealth of those who used to pass by the highway. So they would charge them, right? Like if you're gonna come down this street or come down this highway, there's a cost, right? You're gonna have this business set up in this place, there's a cost. They were like the mafia basically, right? SubhanAllah. 
and that they would practice threatening and hindering people from the way in both the worldly and the spiritually, in the spiritual, right? The worldly sense and the spiritual sense as well, subhanAllah. So Abdullah ibn Abbas and Al-Hassan al-Basri, they said, subhanAllah, that um, the Arabic word, baqiyatullahi khayru lakum, right? Khayru lakum. Right? He says that that which is with Allah is better for you, right? So meaning that the provisions that are with Allah wa ta'ala are better for you, which he has granted to you. This is better than the merchandise of the people which you take by force. So Allah wa ta'ala in, in this verse is telling them, listen, that which is with Allah is better for you than robbing these people blind, than sticking them up, than selling them defective merchandise, than cheating them in weights and measures, for the issue of wealth and money, right? What is with Allah is better. And we have to remember this all of the time, subhanAllah Rabbil Ali. Whenever our desires start to bother us, whenever shaitan is whispering to us to take a different path, to take a different road, to do a different thing, we have to remember what is with Allah is always better. What is with Allah is always better. Forget about that nonsense. I'm going to leave that alone and run to that which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says um, that there's a similar verse, right? Say the pure and the impure are not equal, though the abundance of the impure may allure you much. Right? The pure and the impure are not equal, even though the allurance of this may Right? Or even though the abundance of this wealth may allure you much, it may call your attention. Right? They're not equal no matter what. Right? Don't get carried away or lost in that, inshallah ta'ala. And here Ibn Kathir is saying that basically the halal is better for you than the haram, inshallah ta'ala, and that you should be an individual who is holding on to the halal and staying away from the haram, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he also said the buyer and the seller have options until they separate, right? So now we're learning something about business, right? Meaning I have an option to change the business deal until we separate, okay? And he says, and if they were truthful and explained that there were any defects in this sale, their transactions will be blessed, but if they hid it or lied, the blessings will be taken away. Okay, the blessings will be taken away. So in business, we see that subhanAllah, we will subhanAllah be given that opportunity that as long as we're here communicating with each other, inshallah ta'ala, that we can make changes and alterations to the business transaction that once both individuals get up, they stand up and they leave each other. Basically, that business has been concluded based upon what has been agreed upon, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ also said, the man will be brought and thrown into this fire into, into the fire. And so his hunch, meaning his intestines, will spill out from his stomach. He will circle around them as his donkey goes around the mill. The people of hell will come together and say, Oh man, what happened to you? Did you not enjoy the good? Did you not enjoy the good and forbid the evil? And the man will said, Say, yes, I was enjoying the good, but I myself did not practice it. And I was forbidding the wrong, and I myself did not stay away from the wrong. SubhanAllah. So there's going to be a man in hell that his intestines are going to be spilled out in front of him. And the man is going to be going around his intestines. And the people are going to recognize this person for being a person who used to call to the good and forbid the evil. And oh my, oh man, were you not the one that used to call to the good and forbid the evil? Right? What happened? And the man is going to say, I used to call to the good, but not implement it myself. لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Right? كَبُرَتْ مَقْعَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Right? Most hated and grievous with Allah is for you to do that which, or to say that which you yourself do not do. Inviting someone to something and you yourself are not practicing it. Telling people to stay away from something and you yourself are not staying away from it. SubhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Allahu Akbar. I mean. Ibn Kathir says, but people of noble character and wisdom who believe and fear their Lord, 
behave as Shu'ib did. And he says, I do not wish to contradict you in what I forbid you to do. Right? I don't wish to do the opposite of what I am telling you not to do. I only desire to reform you as far as I am able. All that I want to do is to reform you. This is the sole purpose of the mission of Shu'ib and his call. He had no other agenda than this. All I'm trying to do is help and to aid you, to help, trans to help transform you to be a better right, version of yourself. And I'm not trying to call you to that which me, myself, I'm not doing. Right? SubhanAllah, the call and the message of Shu'ib. Right? SubhanAllah Rabbil Hadim. And we have to be people who are trying to help each other reform, beloved brothers and sisters. Wallahi, we have to be people who are helping each other to reform, but we have to allow ourselves to be helped. Way too often the individual doesn't allow themselves to be helped. Way too often the individual is pushing away the people who are trying to help and to help reform them. Stop pushing those people away who are trying to be a benefit for you, who can be a benefit for you, who love you. Because true love is that they want good for you. Why do we see it to be the opposite? That the people who want evil for us, the people who invite us to the nonsense, the people who invite us to drama, these are the individuals that love us. How? They're driving you to the fire of hell and those who want to take you to paradise and who want to be in paradise and under the mercy of Allah with you and along with you, those are the individuals you push away. Those are the individuals you tell them, why are you coming and telling me that? You don't know what's in my heart, leave me alone. Leave me to myself. Like subhanAllah. And then later on you wonder, why has these individuals left me to myself? Why am I so alone? Because you've pushed people away in your life, Ya Rabb. Right? Don't push people away who love you sincerely for the sake of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. The prophets and the messengers, they love their people. But the people are always trying to reject them, push them away, subhanahu rabbi al-azim. This is why we have to embrace one another and elevate one another and allow each other to help one another that way. How do we survive after holding ourselves accountable if I don't have, mashallah, my family who's going to help me, my brothers and sisters who are going to help me, those who are going to pull me out of the dirt, inshallah ta'ala, help clean me off, make sure that I'm okay. So that together we can, mashallah, travel upon that path of righteousness and goodness. Because if I don't have that, and if I don't desire it for myself, then what am I left with? I'm lost. Subhanallah. Allah then says that Shu'ib, he says to his people, my success can only come from Allah. My success can only come from Allah. Right? And Him I trust, and to Him I return. So Allah is the one upon whom he was depending and the one whom he had hoped for his success, right? Meaning that his mission would be successful carrying out that which Allah told him to carry out, Allahu Akbar. And Allah says in 1189 that he says, Oh my people, let not the breach with me move you so that you are smitened by the like of that which smote the people of Nuh and the people of Hud and the people of Salih, and the people of Lut, as they are not far away from you. Right? So he's reminding them of those people who disbelieved in their prophets and messengers who came before them. Nuh, Lut, Hud, Salih. Right? They were close in time. Some of the scholars say that one, they were close in time, that there's two meanings. One, that they were close in time, or that they were close in terms of the space where they resided. Right? SubhanAllah. Meaning that it was the same place in this place right here. These people, right, were punished because of their disbelief. Don't forget that. Why Allah says in the Quran, فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Travel to the earth and see what was the end of those who used to disbelieve. Reflect. 
contemplate, look at their actions. And if they were destroyed for those actions, then you know I can't have those actions as part of my life. I need to get rid of that and that can be within me. Because if they were destroyed and I have that in me, that means I also can be destroyed. But it is an issue of right constant muraqaba. It is an issue of constant <coughs> surveilling yourself, watching yourself, checking yourself, being vigilant of where you are. <clears throat> and that what Shuhayb Su uh, was doing, Shuhayb was doing, Shuhayb was doing he was combining tarhib, discover, discouragement, fear, and threat with targhib. So tarhib with targhib. Discouragement with encouragement, right? So he was balancing this, this out. He wasn't discouraging too much where he breaks the hope of people, nor was he encouraging too much where the people have nothing but hope and they lose uh, sight of the fact that, subhanAllah, they can be punished as well. He was balanced. A balance of discouragement and encouragement. Hellfire, paradise, hope, forgiveness, right? All of these different things, subhanAllah, that need a balance in life, inshaAllah. And then they say that, subhanAllah, when it comes to the punishment of Shu'ib, and that just like every other people, they said, yeah, Shu'ib, you know, um, we see you as powerless among us, right? Were it, were it not for your tribe, we would have stoned you to death. Right, the same thing with Muhammad. Sallallahu if it wasn't for right Abu Talib, they would have killed Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because they were trying. Right, if it wasn't for this one that was protecting you, you would have been done by now. Right, Subhanallah. And this is, as Ibn Kathir says, a universal phenomenon and attitude that all of the non-believers have. Right, Subhanallah. So when it comes to the punishment. And we're coming to an end. He says, The chiefs of those who behaved arrogantly among his people said, We will expel you, O Shu'ib, and those who believe with you from our town unless you return back to our religion. He says, What even though we detest it, meaning your religion, we will be guilty of forging a lie against Allah if we return back to your religion after Allah has saved us from it. Right? The same thing in this world. Why would I go back to that nonsense I was upon? When Allah saved me from that. He saved me. Why am I going to run back there for? He took me out of that mess. And he put me over here. So that I can be far away from it. Why am I still looking backwards? I need to turn around and look forward inshallah. Right? He says, nor can we return to it unless our Lord Allah wills. Right? Our Lord encompasses all things in his knowledge. Allah knows everything. Allahu Akbar. And in Allah we place our trust. Our Lord judge between us and our people in truth. For you are the best of judges. Right? How beautiful that verse ends. You, ya Allah, are the best of judges. And because you are the best of judges, I have nothing to say. I zip it shut. Subhanallah. So we see that after this, Allah says, so an earthquake overtook them and they fell lifeless in their abodes. So it is mentioned in this context that they were seized. There were like several punishments. They said that they were seized by a severe heat and the wind stopped blowing for about seven days by Allah's permission. Neither any water cooled them nor any shade relieved them from the heat. So they left for open places looking for, 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 for wind, right? For air. And there came a cloud where they were, where they gathered underneath it. When they all gathered in that one place, Allah sent from that cloud sparks, showers of ashes and cinders. And then the earth was shaken and a blast came from the sky. And so they all fell lifeless immediately. Excuse me. And Allah says in 791.92, and they fell lifeless in their abodes. Those who did not believe in Shu'aib, were as if they never had ever dwelt there, lived there before. So Allah rescued Shu'ib and those who believed with him by his mercy, as he says, and when our command came, we rescued Shu'ib and those who believed with him by our mercy or by mercy from us, and the evildoers were seized by a thunderous blast and they fell lifeless in their habitations as if they never dwelt there. So away 
with Midian as Thamud were obliterated before them. And this is 1194 through 95. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding us the importance of looking at those individuals who came before us and how they were destroyed for their disbelief and that this should be enough of a rectification of for ourselves rectifying our actions so that we don't fall into the same thing that they fell into in the past as well and fall into that in the present subhanallah and Allah wa ta'ala has given us way too many beauties and too many things about paradise and too many things if you do good and too many things if you stop following your desires and if you, mashallah, obey Allah and if you obey His Messenger and if you do what I tell you, subhanAllah, you will be given A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all of these beauties and delights, right? How is it that we would not want to run headlong into that, right? SubhanAllah. And run away from the nonsense. Allah paints such a beautiful picture, right? Only if you can imagine that someone comes and knocks on your door. They come and they knock on your door. When you open your door, they say, Bismillah, here are the keys, right? Here are the keys, inshallah ta'ala, to the most beautiful abode that we have in this town. It is the most beautiful of places, the most beautiful mansion. It has trees and rivers and lakes surrounding it. And mashallah, fruits of all types from the trees. SubhanAllah, inside the furniture, mashallah, is of silk brocade and glass and silver and gold. And Allahu Akbar, you have brocade and the best of silk. All you have to do is A, B, C, and D, and you can go and live in that place. How many of us would snatch those keys and do exactly what that person says so that we can have that beautiful place? It is the same place that Allah wa ta'ala is offering you. SubhanAllah. And He's given you the way to get there, inshaAllah ta'ala. He's given you the directions on how not to get lost on the path there. He's given you the perfect GPS system that will not, SubhanAllah, fail. Right? In the process of you trying to get there, if you follow it correctly, you will land in that beautiful abode of paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from them. Ameen. With that, beloved brothers and sisters, we end our session tonight. If there are any questions, if there are any comments, then inshallah ta'ala, we will take them. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from ever being people who compromise in our faith to make us people of strong iman, strong belief, strong resolve, as Allah says in the Quran, and that we stand up for the truth that is found within our faith, even, ya Allah, if we have to stand alone. May Allah make us from those type of individuals and those type of beautiful believers. Ameen. So the floor is now yours, beloved brothers and sisters. Brother Michael, Fadl Allah khair.